Hello everybody, it's Scott Omato. In this video we're going to do a bit of EMC science, some alchemical science for Project E. Uh, because in my Thriving with Project E series, apparently I implied, or maybe even said it outright, but anyway, a viewer understood it, me to be saying that if I had a collector that was feeding into two relays, that the output wouldn't be split between those, those two. Okay, And uh, that's really not the case. And uh, I'll show why and show some of the math behind it. So I've basically done a series of setups here where I'm using one relay. And these are the MK3 feeding into an MK3 energy collector. Uh, there's two relays feeding into a collector, three relays, and four relays. All right. Then an alternative setup here is a single energy collector feeding into a relay. The opposite of that, actually it's the same as that, but we're going to do it the opposite way, where there's two collectors feeding into a relay, three collectors feeding into a relay, and four. Okay? Now, to best do this, the best way I figure it out is I'm going to use um, World Edit, and we just go through and get rid of all these and replace them with uh, red and black wool for each one just so that I could start everything at one time, right? Okay, so I will select here and select here. And then when I go through, there's the collectors and there's the relays. Okay, so now everything should be flowing and we can get some numbers to, to start to look at this. Okay, so collector is the antenna that flows into the relay, which is like the battery. So let's let this get a thousand. So we would expect that at a thousand, if this was equally divided, then those would be 500. But it's not the case. It was 600 and something. Okay. So that's interesting. Now, if we get this one to 2000, we would expect that other one to be a thousand if they were equally divided, right? So here's a 2000. And it's not, it's like 1200 and something. Okay, so it's not equally divided, or there's some other factor at play. So let's do a 3,000, and we'll look at the one with 3. All right, so here we come up on 3,000, about uh, now-ish, and we're at 1,400. Okay, so we're getting more than what's being put in there. This is the total transfer amount uh, there. Okay, so let's look at 4,000. So 4,000 total transfer amount for that group um, about now. And we're at 1,600, okay? So there's more total. So if this is 1,600 per, per each one of those, then that's 6,400 total in that group compared to 4,000 in that total in that group, okay? So that was 4,000. This was per, 1,600 per, so that's 6,400. All right, let's understand what the, where the uh, difference is. And it is in the concept of bonus EMC that comes from these relays. Whenever you transfer EMC, it's a conduit, okay? This is the antenna, this is the battery, but you get a bonus for transferring into these relays, right? Let me go to the wiki. And we'll take a look and see what it says about it. This is the actual Project E wiki, which is like the least useful one of the of the wikis online for Project E or for equivalent exchange, actually. The equivalent exchange ones are much more useful. But it says that the vibrations from the energy seem to give one EMC per second bonus whenever EMC flows. That's for the MK1. For the MK2, we get a bonus of three EMC per second when transferring EMC. For this one, we get a 10 EMC per second, right? So let's look at a very useful wiki here, which is the Tekkit wiki. Okay, the Tekkit was the mod pack at Clued, uh, Cleveland Exchange 2. So it has some good information about it in there. So it gives us the recipe and everything for the antimatter relays. Now, in the section here on generating EMC, it says, to generate EMC without breaking down items requires the use of an energy collector. That's what we're doing, use the collector as an antenna. When 
Paired with an NF matter relay, the EMC produced by the energy collector will pass into the relay and be stored. Okay, as a benefit to doing this, the bonus CMC will be collected by the relay and stored as well. Bonus CMC will be collected. This bonus EMC is based on the tier level of the relay, which we just saw, and the amount of sides powered, the amount of sides powered by the collectors. Potentially, an antimatter relay can be powered on all six sides. Okay, so it tells you the bonus, the same as what we saw here. Mark 1, 1, Mark 2, 3, Mark 3, 10. All right, so gives us an example. I have an... Mark 1 antimatter relay, and I put one Mark 1 energy collector adjacent to it. The side is now powered, gaining the four EMC a second from the collector and gaining an additional EMC bonus. Okay, so for a total of five. If you add a second one, that relay will get the additional bonus of the EMC, but the collector will split evenly between the two relays. Okay. Energy collector will split evenly between the two relays. All right, so let's let's look, apply that to our example here. Okay, so we can see from the tooltips here that the energy collector MK3 has a maximum generation rate of 40 MC a second. It says maximum generation because it's somewhat dependent upon the the sun. These higher levels they produce light themselves. Okay, they produce a light level of 15 themselves so the level of the sun doesn't matter they're they're self-powering right but it produces 40 emc a second and then we get a bonus emc for it flowing between these two at the mark three level so a total of 50 emc is flowing between here right 50 emc now on this guy okay this guy is 40 emc a second split between two so 20 EMC a second going into each one of these, plus the 10% bonus for each side. Now side is considered this antimatter relay is connected on one side. This anti-relay is connected on one side on one side. All of them are connected on one side, but they add together because each side will get a 10 bonus. So this is 40 EMC split into two, 20 EMC for each one, 10. So that's 30 EMC to each one. So that's a total of 60 EMC compared to 50. So 50 EMC is flowing here, 60 EMC is flowing here. Now this guy, uh, we've got our 40 EMC a second being split into three. So that's basically 13 EMC if you round down. So 13. Uh, so once again, amongst those, if we get 13 here and we get a bonus EMC of 10 for each side, then we get uh, 23 for each one. So 46, 69. This one's 69, all right? 69 and 60 and 50 is what we're looking at. Now, we have this guy here, which, once again, 40 MC a second, not split into four. So that's 10 on each end, 10, all right? And um, so that is... Going to be a 10 bonus as well on each side. So 20 into each one of these, 20 MC for 80. So 80, 69, uh, 60, and 40. Okay? That's how that works. So the ratio is a little bit different from 80 all the way down to 50. Okay? 80 to 50. So none of them are actually double of the any of the others. So let's look at it. We're 15,000 there. We're 9,000 times 2 there. So we're 18,000 there. 15,000 to 18,000. This one, um, let's see, what did I say? Yeah, 15,000, 9,000, yeah, 18,000 is what I said there. This was times 3, so 7,500 times 3. Is 15, 2250, something like that. And this one's 665 or something, I don't know, 66. So 24 plus, I don't know, a couple. Anyway, it doesn't matter. You get the idea that they're not like double each other or anything, 
but you get this bonus EMC that's flowing as I laid out to there. 50 EMC, 60 EMC, 69 EMC, 80 EMC. Okay, now let's look at these guys. This one is going to be different, right? So uh, the wiki tells us about that as well. Let's read into that. So in the second paragraph, the wiki says, now I place two MK1 energy collectors next to an antimatter relay. Each Mark I energy collector will transfer four EMC for the eight total. So each one of them will do eight total into the relay. It's not split. Each one of them is sending it into the relay for eight total. But you also get a bonus for each side, okay, for a gain of two. There's a, a one gain on each one of those. So there's going to be 10 EMC total in that guy, okay? 10 EMC total. So let's look at our math, see how it works out over here. Okay, so let me select this and select that. And I will change them over to that and to that. Okay, and get rid of the selection. All right, so here we go. Now this one, oops, we're flowing into here. So if we get a thousand on here, okay, we have one energy collector. There's a thousand. That's got two energy collectors. That's two thousand. So that's double of that. That's one energy collector. That's two feeding in. All right, let's see where we're at here. Let's get. Uh, let's go to two thousand, and we'll see where we're at on three. Okay, so let's go to 2,000 about right now, and let's look at that. Okay, so 2,000 times 3, 6,000. It's triple, all right? Now let's look at that. To go to 3,000, we would expect there to be 12,000 on the uh, other one at the end with 4. So 3,000 is pretty much right there, and 12,000, okay? So they're pretty much triple of each other. But there is additional bonuses on each side too. Okay, so let's let's break it down. 40 EMC a second is flowing in there. That's 50 EMC a second, just like that guy. Okay, this one, there's 40 EMC and there's 40 EMC. That's 80. Each side, however, is getting an additional 10. That's 100. That's double that, 50 and 100. Okay, this guy, 40 EMC, that's 12. Uh, 120 EMC plus three, that's 150 EMC. Okay, that's three times that guy. This one, 40 EMC times four is 160, plus the bonus of 10 on each side for four bonuses for 200. Okay, double that one, quadruple that one, just as we'd expect. These are much straighter math to figure out because they are just multiples of each other. Okay, these are in ratio to each other. Okay, uh, but they do still get a bonus and it's not totally split between them. Okay, very important to realize. Now, just as a final thing, they give you an additional thought and say, is it worth it to do it? There's a break even point. Okay, so what does the math say? That before jumping at the chance to make some extra EMC per side, just considering bonus alone is what they're doing. Take a look at the figures. If antimatter relays will take multiple real-time hours, real-time hours, hours of your life, to recover the cost of the materials required to make them, all right? So unless you specifically need one of it, need them for their unique functionality, it's ill-advised to invest in it. So they say, all right? Now, what they are breaking down here for you, they're saying if you want to buy one additional MK1 based on the MC you generated extra, just the extra stuff, then it's going to take you 20 hours if you just have one, okay? One side being powered, okay, of a relay. One side of a relay being powered, that, that very first setup of a pair that we saw, okay? This is my second setup I'm showing, third setup, fourth I didn't show five and six. All right, so 20 hours, 10 hours, six hours, five hours, four hours, three hours, okay? And not much gain to go from two because the cost goes up, 
as well. Same thing with three. The cost goes up, so you're not getting a lot of difference, okay? It's it's a little less expen a little less time investment, but still not that much now. It says all of them were tested at light level 15. Here, by the way, is the light level for uh, the uh, relays. MK1 gives a light level of 7. MK2, light level of 11, light level of 15. Because it does matter, and they'll show you in this final EMC equation here, that if you want to look at something on all six sides, you potentially have a side that's covered, that's not getting light, that is only getting light from its self-generating self and the relay, okay? So if you're doing MK1, you're not quite reaching full light capacity, right? If you're doing MK1, you're 7, you know, and even if you had two that were lighting each other, it's only 14. You're not quite getting the full uh, light levels. It tells you right there it's 7. And so you have to consider that, of what, how that's going to matter in the calculation because it'll affect your EMC flow a little bit. These higher levels, we don't have to worry about that, okay? And, and keep in mind that we know the secret of time control, and we invest in um, dark matter pedestals and watch the flowing time, which are additional costs, but they vastly speed these guys up to where we quickly reach a saturation of EMC that we could not possibly spend beyond all of our wildest dreams. And I like that point. And by the way, guys, these are overpowered videos. Project E is an overpowered mod. If you don't like overpowered mods and you consider them cheaty, then move along, my friend, and go find something less cheaty in your opinion. Because these are overpowered videos, and I like it that way. So thanks, guys. This is Scott Omato. I hope you picked up something from that. Uh, it's pretty cool. I love uh, Project E because of this kind of stuff where you can actually sit down and uh, play with numbers and exponentially look at growth of things and try to, you know, do some optimizations. And uh, it's that's a very, very fun aspect of it. Uh, I do want to state emphatically that, EM, that Project E in itself is inherently pretty balanced amongst its um, play, the interplay of its elements. It's only when you start to do cross-mod interactions and stuff that you quickly get out of control and it can break other mods. Uh, but the armor and the tools and the weapons them stuff it, it, and uh, stuff themselves are not balanced against vanilla stuff. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to work on changing that uh, in creating some packs where our, moss, our bo uh, bosses and mobs and fights and stuff like that are balanced against Project E. Um, right now that's not the case in vanilla, but anyway, that's going to be it for this video. This is Scott Omaro. Thanks so much for watching guys. Have a great day. Hope you picked up something. Let me know in the comments and like, subscribe, join the tribe. Have a great day. Bye-bye.